G'day! Thanks for watching and I hope you're well wherever you are in the world right now. Today I'm just dropping in really quickly to talk to you about my real life experience with the Peak Design Camera Capture version 3. Okay, now let's start this off by saying Peak Design is an incredible company. I really love what they're doing with their camera gear. I've got a, quite a few of their straps. I've got the Peak Design Slide Light. i got the Peak Design Slide and another Slide Light. And I've got the Peak Design Wrist Cuff or whatever they call it. I've seen the Peak Design camera bags. They are fantastic. I'm not sure that I would be willing to drop three to $500 for a camera bag, mind you, when you could just simply have an ordinary old pack or some other camera bag option. That's a lot of money. But that does not detract from the fact that Peak Design are a terrific camera accessory company doing great things in the industry. All this being said, I do however question a design company that releases an Allen key with a key ring obstructing the functional tip. That's just, why would they send this out with this on there? I mean, it defies belief. It, oh. Okay, but let's get to the point of the video. Over the last few days, I've been down on the Upper West Coast in the South Island of New Zealand doing a 78 kilometer hike through the bush, through the mountains, out to the coast, absolutely wonderful. And one thing I did was I took my pack with the camera capture version three clip. Here it is right here. And the other part of it, of course, is the camera plate, which is on the bottom of the camera. And the idea is the plate just, ah, oh, this is perfect. This is exactly the put. There we go. In, out. In, out. The thing is with the camera capture version three clip, it is a fantastic looking piece of equipment and it actually costs quite a lot. I had to spend over 140 New Zealand dollars to get this camera clip version three. For the first few weeks of having the camera capture version three, it worked an absolute treat, no complaints at all. But one thing I found very quickly is that the metal surfaces wear rapidly. The paint wears off and then rather than being a nice, easy, efficient system of retaining and releasing your camera, it actually binds up. Where the paint rubs off, the metal binds on itself. And during this hike, I saw several opportunities that I really wanted to get photos and I missed them. I missed them with native birds, I missed them with the South Island Robin, I missed them with the Wekka, I missed them with the Kias flying overhead, I missed them with other hikers doing interesting things. I missed a fantastic shot on the Inter-Island Ferry of a family waving to the captain up on the bridge and the captain waving back. And all the meantime I'm doing this, what you just saw wrestling to get the camera off the camera capture version three. I've looked online and there are some other reviews about this. I think it's a design flaw because rather than powder coating or making it with some sort of metal that slides easily on itself, they've simply painted this metal and once the paint wears off, the metal grinds up and then it actually binds, it grips in. And because there's quite a bit of play between the camera plate and the clip, it doesn't always go in the correct direction and you actually have to align it perfectly to slide it out. And as you know, in high pressure photography situations, being able to do everything exactly perfectly is not always an option. In fact, this camera clip here does not work anymore properly. It just binds so terribly. It was the most frustrating thing on the hike. I mean, check out this picture here. You can see the pain in my face from doing the walk, just the arduous, monotonous hiking kilometer after kilometer after kilometer beating you down, but wasting away up my morale even more than that arduous physical exertion was the fact of this damn camera. Peak Design, if you do see this, please don't put the key ring through the end of the Allen key at the functional tip. And please, for version four of the camera clip, do something about the abrasion to the painted surface leading to the camera plate binding in the camera capture. It's not cool, man, especially when we're paying this much money for it. If you're thinking of buying one of these, sure, it's gonna be fantastic for casual, everyday, average use, just light use, just light use. You're gonna look the part like these people here. Woo, woo. You're gonna look the part. It looks great with your camera right here. It's a really comfortable place to carry it. I mean, wherever you choose to carry it, on your, on your bag strap or on your belt or however you choose to use the camera capture. But if you're a semi-pro or you're a professional or you're an enthusiast who really needs to get the shot in a snap, then I would not recommend this. I do not recommend it for that because it becomes a source of frustration when your camera binds in the clip 
and you miss the shot. As a photographer, if you miss the shot, you're not a photographer. You miss the shot. Okay, I really don't want to get too animated in this video, so I'm going to cut it short now. But peak design, please, if you happen to know about this issue, can you refine it for the version 4? I really look forward to that. And I'll tell you what, I'll buy it. I'll give it another go. No worries at all. I'll give it another go. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. So there you go. That is my real life experience with the camera capture version 3. I mean, if they're going to claim to be at the peak of design, then they want to be at the peak of design. But anyway, that's what it's about. Actual testing in the field. And that's what I gave it. And that's what I'm giving to you today. I hope it helps. Bear it in mind, next time I go hiking, and I need to get the shot, I'm gonna be using a shoulder strap. And just, it's always there.